Welcome to the RF Elements Unlicensed Podcast. My name is Caleb, and we're here with Tacos Papadopoulos. What's going on, man? What's happening, Caleb? How are you? Good, good. So, quick, call to action. Tell our folks what they're supposed to be doing right now. Absolutely. Remember to like, listen, and subscribe to our YouTube channel or wherever you download your audio podcast on Spotify, Google, or Apple. Very good, very good. If you guys got any questions, we'll tell you how to contact us here at the end. So... It is currently the Friday before Wispapalooza. So Wispapalooza Eve, if you may say. So Ooh, I like the way that sounds. Exactly. <laughs> we are tingling with anticipation. Um, a lot more of a hydration plan in place, though, versus Christmas Eve, right? So I'm like, mm, gotta <laughs> that's, start. That's very true. <laughs> <laughs> gotta get ready for that. So I'm, I'm th- drinking water. I'm <laughs> drinking water. <laughs> so I thought what we might do this week is, you know, the other week we had Claude on and I had a great talk with him about the Wispa side of the Wispa Palooza and the shows in general. And I thought it'd be kind of fun to give us uh, or give our view of how these shows work, how they're put together, what's involved, tips and tricks that we've picked up from doing this. We've been doing this a long time. And just kind of show you, you know, peek behind the kimono here and see what uh what we have to get done to get this show happen. So it looks like we're partying and having a good time, which, I mean, granted, we are, but uh, there's a lot a of bad. work that goes into it. So first of all, tell us, where, where are we? We're booth 647, I believe, right? That's correct. That's correct. So when you're walking in, we're in the far right back corner, I believe, of uh, most of the uh, uh, displays that are out there. Yeah, so hang right towards the end. Uh, we're in the end of a row. We've taken over four single booths into one mega booth. So mega booth. Yeah. We've only changed <laughs> our spot like three times. So sorry about that, Gary and friends. <laughs> <laughs> but they they really do. I mean, Claude was legit in saying how hard that they work at Wispa for putting this stuff on too. Because yeah, we we kept going round and round and round trying to get uh, a location that better suits us. And uh, thanks for their hard work. I think we got it. Yep. Yep. So for us, you know, the planning for the show starts months in advance. You know, we've got an excellent marketing team. Uh, those guys do a great job. Uh, shout out to all those guys for sure. And one of the things they do is actually they'll render out the booth for us because it helps us decide where we put in our displays, where we're putting our towers, where we're putting the poles and the, the, the seats and all that other sort of stuff. Cause we like to change it up every year, you know? I mean, we always have the same thing. Somewhere to sit down. We've got some pop-up banners and some cool stuff. We've got shirts and we've got all of our towers showing our products. But, you know, every year these products change and we want to showcase some new goods, which we've got some new goods coming, which we're excited about. Um, we got new pop-ups. We got new artwork and stuff like that. So that that in and of itself and is ordeal, you know, trying to get all that planned, uh, the modeling for the towers. I mean, how many how many towers are we up to this time? I think we're putting up five this year. So we're going to have five tower sections with uh, the full diversity of all our antennas, twist port adapters, and other accessories and stuff that uh, we have now. Yeah. So that's fun. So we get that ready and we're like, okay, now let's make this list of 10,000 parts we need to get together. This spread across (laughs) three continents. (laughs) Some of the stuff that's new and you're like, okay, we know the show's coming for a while. We got this new product we want to showcase. We're going to get the prototypes done in time. Yeah, that always gets done about the last, I don't know, 37 seconds of available time. So we get those limits. (laughs) Yeah, that's the way it always goes. So we get all that stuff shipped and and that's always an adventure too, because you ship 18 different shipments there. Then we've got to round them up. So book all of our stuff. We fly out. Normally we would go out Monday morning uh, and then we get started up. But now we've kind of like, well, maybe we'll go out Sunday. Let's, let's ease into this. That, that Monday where you're flying out early morning flight, especially with us with a three hour time difference where I am, that it makes for quite a bit of a long day. So Fly out there, get settled, meet up with folks. Then Monday at noon, the excitement starts. The total dun, dun, dun. <laughs> the total <laughs> chaos and dumpster fire that is set up. So it's like the- hurry, it's hurry up and wait. You know, like you're so ready to go, and you get there, and then you have to wait like four hours for them to bring you your show crate out. You know, it's terrible. <laughs> we were like, we've got six people from multiple countries here. We're ready to roll. Oh, you're gonna bring it out in two to three hours. That's okay. So the other thing was getting checked in. I like coming in the day before now to get checked in. So we're not also sitting on top of our suitcases and going, oh, here's everything I own in the middle of the show floor. I hope no one walks off with it. So, yeah, there's that. <laughs> there's that, that. So we get set up, get it all put together, uh, which is always an affair. 
uh, bits and pieces and nuts and bolts and then go, oh, there's five of these in the shipment. We don't actually need but one. So get all that set up, everything laid out nice and pretty, catch a breath, and then it's on. Monday night, because we try to be like, all right, we're going to take it real easy Monday night. You know, we got, <laughs> we got to be cranking. We got the lunch at this. We got the show floor. We're going to be adults. We're going to be proper, ready to go. And that usually goes out the window mm, immediately, maybe. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it never it never really works out the way you plan, right? So there's always something to take you sideways or distract you or you know uh, make you do something you really weren't planning. And sleep is usually one of those things that gets pushed to the side and staying up late and you know uh, meeting up with people and talking and hanging out is usually uh, dominates uh, the whole the whole show, the whole show for sure, <laughs> for sure. So uh, and Monday's night is a good night because there's a lot of the uh, the big vendor um presentations and stuff so like camium's got an event mimosa's got an event you know these are where the the big you know they're really doing their showcase thing that way they can get everyone pumped up and talked about on the floor so that's a good place to, to meet up with everyone if you guys haven't signed up to some of those definitely check those out so then Tuesday, you know, there's various, all the sessions and stuff start, which we're not really a part of generally. Uh, but then the exhibit hall floor opens around lunchtime. So that's where all of you guys pour in and it is on, it is chaos for at least hour or two. And it's, it's fun because like people walk up and you're like, dude, I haven't seen you in a year. It's been awesome. What's up? And you know, you're hanging out with all your buddies catching up. And then there's some poor guy that walks up. That's like, hi, I'm curious to learn about your product. So you've got to be able to shift modes rapidly back and forth and be like, okay, yeah, hold on. I'll catch up with you in a little bit, buddy. And you know, helping folks out. So that's always a part of it. Uh, shirts galore. We're gonna have a ton of t-shirts. We've got product catalogs and stuff like that. So if you come by the booth and, and there's one of us free, you're probably going to get attacked with a catalog. That's our way to sort of trap you into the conversation and be like, Hey, have you seen this? Start whacking you upside the head with it. So that's a fun attention grabber. Yeah, for sure. Um, and then it's just talk, 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 talk. So that's a big part of it. It's definitely, um, you know, from from start to finish, it's just really a hundred percent nonstop, nonstop. I mean, you know, there's also you know the shipments don't always make it there as well, right? So we're you know on top of you know <clears throat> trying to set it up and trying to get everything that's there. There's also the stuff that's like, hey, we don't we don't have this yet, and we have to get it. So you have to kind of work all that all that stuff in there uh, on top of you know trying to be professional and trying to uh, you know get all this information out to our customers. It's it's quite chaotic actually. Yeah, there's generally someone running around in the background with a spreadsheet with uh, yeah. eyes of dis- panic. Like, a Where is like, damn, it, damn it, damn it, damn it, yeah. yeah. Uh, guys, uh, all we have is either small shirts or like triple X. That's all we've got. So. Yeah. And, we, and, you know, we never get that right. We, we try and learn from, you know, every past show and stuff like that it's like i think it goes in cycles so it's like one show we we didn't have shirts big enough so the next show we made a whole bunch of like you know triple you know triple x and double x and then everybody seemed to be skinny right because everybody wanted like large or extra large we had all these big ones and uh, i don't know it's 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 difficult to really to really judge i don't know uh why it works out the way it works out but hopefully we have a, a better mix this year uh of shirts so that way we can you know give out as many as possible and, and ones that actually fit you. <laughs> That'd be nice, right? <laughs> yeah, that would be a nice thing. So we'll see. We'll see. So the exhibit hall is open generally from like 12 to 2, and then it'll soft close and opens back up, I don't know, 4 to 6. or It's it's in a little app. It'll be on the schedules and everything. So I think what a lot of folks don't understand is that soft close. It's not a hard close. Like most of the most of us will still be around. Now, you know, maybe a little hit or miss. We might have to go put out some fires in email or make some calls or run around the panic trying to find where all of our samples are or whatever that should have gotten eat. there but eat yeah <laughs> eat ourselves <laughs> yeah that's always important so especially with someone of my particular stature i get kind of hangry so <laughs> i know because y'all start throwing like snicker bars at me but like hey man <laughs> she's just gonna say if you're at the show and caleb looks agitated just give him a snickers and he'll be fine that's all he's just yeah. hungry <laughs> yeah and if it's after like four hand me a beverage so but, uh, <laughs> definitely but um yeah that's always that's always an affair 
But that's always a good it, because it calms down. If like if you don't have sessions, obviously look at the sessions, check out. There's so much good material there. But if there's not a session active that you're really into or something, or you've got multiple people and you've got some folks in those sessions, you know, come talk to us then. Um, everyone wants to try to do it that first day too, and we tell folks, look, we're there Tuesday, or we're there Wednesday all day, and then Thursday, you know, is that first two hour period. So we're gonna be there. We're gonna want to talk to you whether it's Tuesday the first ten minutes or you know end of the thing thursday we're there so you don't have to to be there immediately it's not like the information is is uh out of stock like everything else can be right <laughs> there's there's no talk shortage going on right now no so. not, not not with you and i at least right we can talk forever <laughs> i think also what's really important now that you mentioned sessions is don't forget about our vendor presentation which is on wednesday the 13th at i think 9 15 a.m in champagne room four <laughs> that's it just sounds funny whenever i say that but anyway in champagne four uh, make sure you come check out our vendor presentation where we'll have have some updated information for the market, including uh, new products and other things. So Champagne 4, 9.15 a.m., Wednesday morning the 13th. Come check that out. Yeah, so this is our, our big time to show and get the big boards up and everything. So that's always fun. Um, you know, like I said, it's over the course of three days. Uh, if we are around, you know, catch us at the bar and that's where we do a lot of our socializations and it's not for the, the party aspect. I mean, it kind of is right, but it always seems to be the great sort of focal point or meeting point. So even if that's not hardcore, your scene, totally get it. Uh, it is a great place to run into people and meet people because they're naturally congregate. Now I've not been to the Paris, so I'm not really sure what the layout is. The Rio had that eye bar that was right by the front door. That was the giant. Yeah. Uh, trap. <laughs> so I went, I went, yeah, it's right. Like, yeah, it's like the spider trap, right? The spider web, everybody hangs out there and as people walk by to kind of jump out, grab you and bring you in. But, uh, Paris is quite, is quite similar, uh, in, in that way. I went last year when they canceled it, we still had our tickets. So we ended up going anyway. And, uh, I think when you walk in the, the main doors on the right hand side, there's this kind of, you know, main, main bar lounge sit down area, which is a uh, pretty comfortable for socializing and hanging out. And again, yeah, of course, there's a lot of drinking <laughs> that goes on in Vegas. But it, again, it's not for everybody and it's not something that uh, you have to do. But it's a great way. If you're a new wisp, uh, if you don't really know anybody, chances are if you look in these kind of main places, usually the main bar or the main lounge, that's where you'll find most of the wisp people hanging out. And it's a great place to just come in, sit down, say, hey, I'm so-and-so with you know XYZ Company. How are you? And, and meet somebody new and, and start chatting. I mean, by far in the 10 years I've been doing this, everybody is super, super friendly. So don't be shy. Stop in and, uh, you know, come see one of us. Yeah. And like, if you're new, like, don't be, don't be nervous about it. Just say, Hey, this is my first time here. I'm just getting started. And there'll be plenty of people that'll talk to you, take you under the wing, show you what's going on. So it is a very Definitely. open community, which is a good time. It rocks. Um, I love it. I love it. It really does. So as much as like, you know, my younger years, I'm like, Vegas. And now I'm like, mm, Vegas. Vegas. <laughs> and I, I kind of drag in, but like you, you, as soon as you walk through the door and you get that like super oxygenated casino air hits your nose and then you see some of your folks and you're like, oh yeah, okay, I can do this. Let's do it. So yeah. yeah. Oh, it's always a good time. I don't know if I should laugh or cry at this point. Like I said, it's it's a lot. It really takes a lot out of us. Uh, you know, like I said, from from start to finish. I mean, we've been working on this stuff for for months now, uh, trying to lay out, like you know, Caleb said, you know, uh, how everything looks, to how everything goes, and you know, you try and you know, so to speak, choreograph kind of the the flow of the show and uh, scheduling everything like that. So it really takes a lot a lot out of a person, a lot out of a person for sure so you know hey, for your vendors you know you should go out there whoever your favorite vendors are make sure you stop in and just say thanks because chances are they put in a lot of work to kind of setting this up and trying to deliver as much information to you as, as possible so it's not just us uh, there's a a lot of the vendors out there doing uh, kind of the same song and dance we are you know so it's it's a it's a hard life it's a hard life it looks it looks easy sometimes on the outside on social media it looks great like hey look at him having a good time but you know you don't see the tears and the sore feet and the headaches and stuff that doesn't that doesn't always come through you know <laughs> yeah the the, the 2 a.m you're like where's my water bottle uh, so <laughs> it's um, seven dollars if you take it from the fridge damn it i'll do it 
<laughs> I don't care. I will die. I'll just drink from the sink at this point, you know? <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, yeah. So, um, you know, come see the manufacturers for sure. Um, see your sales reps from the various sales channels and stuff, you know? Sales reps. I always used to give sales reps when I was in channel such a hard time. Um, I give our guys a hard time and it's kind of my job not to, but uh, oops. But, um, you know, these guys are really working things, just keeping up with everybody, making contacts and stuff. So it's a great opportunity. Get them, take you out to dinner. Um, if you're wanting to have like a serious actual business meeting, like definitely you can set that up. Uh, I wouldn't shoot for many breakfasts. I have seen it. It's always funny. It's like I've, I scheduled an 8 a.m. breakfast with a customer and I'm like, really? Mm, okay, cool, cool. <laughs> <laughs> that's your choice um and we'll do it yeah we'll do, we'll do, we do it. what we have to do right so we'll, in the we'll, end uh yeah we, we we power through it all so lunch meetings probably a lot more productive um or you know if you want to have a meeting like i said we've got a number of folks at the booth and one it's maybe not tuesday but like wednesday you know if you want to sit down and have a little sit down meeting and talk some things out just let us know we'll get it set up um with one of our folks not a problem at all um, you know, any dinners and stuff like that. Let's figure it out. Like our schedules, we've kind of given up on trying to make a hardcore schedule. We used to, we're like, all right, this night we're doing this one, this night we're doing this. And it always just ended up in flames immediately. So now yeah, we're, it just, it just never works out. There's just so much. And it's, you know, again, it takes two to tangle, right? So it's not just about you making that appointment. It's like, you know, is the other guy going to do it? And, and it often doesn't work out. I mean, <clears throat> again, during the day, obviously it's a little bit easier, uh, for, for that stuff to actually, uh, happen and stuff like that but yeah in the end we're, we're kind of you know flying by the seat of our pants you know and just ad hoc making making things work but uh, we're definitely <laughs> available to anybody yeah we're available we're available to anybody who uh, wants to meet with us whether uh, you're coming to our booth when the the booth is open or you're coming when you know the soft close uh, so to speak is happening you know come on by talk to us and then if we can't I mean if we can't get to you or you know whatever schedules just don't work out while we're at the show I mean the follow-up and we didn't even talk about the weeks that it takes to kind of follow up sometimes with a lot of the leads and communications and meetings that we have you know generated at this show to then follow up and and, and finish after the show so um, don't feel like you have to you know cram everything in there um, um, there's ways of making it work uh, outside of the show as well. So um, that's something to keep in mind. Yep. Yep. For sure. And if we're slammed, just, you know, and we can't talk to you at the moment because we, we got a line, just come on back later. Like it'll thin out eventually. I promise. So uh, don't, it's don't feel it's bad. It's definitely crazy at first. It's yeah. definitely crazy at first. Yeah, our, our booth gets a, a lot of attention and, you know, not to kind of put a spoiler out there, but we're going to have something pretty cool set up uh, in our booth as we do every year. So again, Make sure you come by our booth uh, sometime, sometime during the show for sure. Um, we'll be posting a lot of stuff on social media like we, we normally do, but we'll be throwing up some stuff there, some cool things you'll be seeing. So keep an eye on our social media for sure. Um, some giveaways too. We're going to have giveaways at our booth as well. So. Yeah, we're we're still working on some details. On um, the end of the the end of the show, we're gonna be moving some stuff. So, but yeah, I mean that's really it. Like it's kind of hard to express how much work it is without sounding like a big crybaby. But at the same time, it is it is definitely worth it. And just it's <laughs> well, so enjoyable. I just need to vent. I just need to vent and come out here and whine a little bit. So let me let me have this. Okay, let me okay. have this. <laughs> I, I hear you. Bro. I feel better now. I feel better. <laughs> <laughs> but it is also such a good time. Like it's just. You you get to see so many people that we've known for years and years and years and, um, and getting everybody in more of a relaxed mode is really great too. So, and then Thursday, Thursday comes and then it's tear down, tear down tornado is always a fun time because no matter when most people go home, like that late night flight Thursday or even Friday, but God forbid, if you don't tear your booth down in 37 seconds, people lose their mind. And then they're trying to roll up the floors and the forklifts moving everything. So it's like, all right, we have to not only tear down the stuff, keep what we're keeping, but also not get run over at the same time. So. And nothing ever fits in the crate the way it did when you shipped it out there, right? So it's like, it's like hyper Tetris, right? So Tetris is cool <laughs> when you're setting up the booth. You know, you put everything in there. The boxes are all nice and they're closed the way they're supposed to be and everything lines up. But somehow when it 
tum- comes time to putting it all back together and in the show crate to send it out, oh, forget about it. It's <laughs> complete chaos, complete chaos to make that happen. Yeah, boss, I don't know what happened to all that stuff. They they picked it up. But they must have lost it, shipping it back out. I don't know. So I totally didn't what push into a, push into a pile and throw a match to it. So uh, Definitely, yeah. yeah. Crazy but, stuff. That's the the sort of background. So what about some tips for f- folks that are new? I thought we'd throw some little tips out there. Uh, some fun ones like wear walking shoes, comfortable walking True. shoes. Like I actually see this a lot. I mean, you should know that, but you know, a lot of times when folks are new, they're, they're like, okay, this is my first professional event in this industry. So their business casual with their nice shoes and stuff. And they don't realize you're going to walk like 20 miles. Okay. <laughs> you are yeah. definitely getting your steps. You're going to walk a lot. Like the hotel room is generally a long ways from the convention hall and everything spread out. So you're going to walk a lot. Yeah, definitely. And bring business cards. Don't worry about them being flashy. Don't worry about whether they look professional or not. It doesn't matter. But bring business cards. So that way we have a way of getting your information and uh, us giving you our information so we can sync up later. So business cards are extremely important. Bring a lot. If anything, usually business cards are used for like raffles and giveaways, right? So if anything, just bring them so that way you have something to drop in the box. But uh, I see many, many wisps, uh, even experienced ones, sometimes you forget them, right? So it's not just like, hey, you should have them or not. Just remember to bring them. Again, if you haven't made business cards, maybe you don't know exactly what your company name is going to be or something. <laughs> <laughs> just again bring a, a business card that has your name on it you know your contact information email and phone number it's really important and uh, it's a, a great way again to make sure that you can synchronize up with anybody that you find important uh, at that show so business cards yep yeah and there's a lot i mean we could take the pictures of the badges and everything else it just seems like the business card still i mean it's an old school technology but it just seems to be the way that it works out the best so it does. And well, you know, the, the nice thing about the business cards too is usually the back is what? Empty, right? So you can write some notes. And that's why I like it. I mean, we've done it before. We used to rent the the, the QR code scanner. So come, somebody comes up, you kind of scan it, beep, it goes in the database. So later you can kind of go through the list, right? But then you have this huge list of all these random names and businesses and stuff. And you're like, eh, what did we talk about? Whatever. So yeah, I mean, I know it's, it's old school, but uh, it's really, really effective. And uh, again, not everybody has those scanners so uh it's and it's a lot neater than trying to write down it's like is that an i or is that a one i don't know what that email address is i know because my handwriting is sloppy as crap right oh, yeah. so it's yeah. complete complete garbage so you definitely you definitely want to bring a business card uh like i said just to make sure that you know those defined things you need email address name and phone number is 100 percent legible you know <laughs> Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, you're going to need to hydrate. So, I mean, we, we say it from a joking perspective if you're uh, among the party enthusiasts like some of us could be. Uh, but even if you're not, yeah. you are going to be it's talking dry. so much. You're going to be walking so much. It is so dry, right? And Super, super dry. You're going to be tired and cranky and just not feel good. And you're going to need just way more water than you think. So I tell that to everybody. Um, yeah, I do it important. all the time. Yeah, I bring bring chapstick. I bring chapstick because my lips dry out, my nose dries out. Again, it's not about being dehydrated because of the drinking and stuff. It's just a natural environment. The air is very dry inside because everything is cold. When you walk outside, it's hot and dry. It really just dries out your body. So hydration is really, really important. And I'm not saying beers and sodas. I mean, seriously, drink some water when you're out there. You'll have a much better time. Water, Gatorade, you still got time to get some Pedialyte packets. Those are actually <laughs> lifesavers. So, your little safety travel pack that you travel with. Yeah. My old <laughs> Aspirin man tra- Pedialyte. Yeah. <laughs> Aspirin Pedialyte, Tom's, just my old man bag that everyone makes fun of until it comes to the rescue, right? So, yep, yep. I know you got my back. So, I'm good. <laughs> uh, and then, other than that, really just pace yourself. So, you know, you don't have to see everything the first day. You don't have to have every single conversation. Like, this is spread out over days right and there's evenings and night events and there's a lot of ways to track folks down so if you've got somebody specific that you're kind of targeting or whatever you know just kind of keep an eye on things ease in when you can uh, take some notes of course yeah, everyone's got to put out their own fires at the office and everything else but plan on you know you're gonna be up late uh you'll probably be up early but just try to make some sort of plan to pace yourself and not burn out there's been there's been a lot of times where you see folks tuesday morning and you're like hey you're feeling 
feeling? Well, Tuesday around lunch, and you're like, I'm dying. It's like, okay, well, we got four more days, so <laughs> suck <laughs> it, it up, over. Buttercup. It ain't over. <laughs> yeah, I think it's also important, like the uh, <clears throat> the sessions and stuff. Again, like I said, especially kind of like the the smaller wisps and stuff, where it's just yourself and you're kind of running around trying to make all these different sessions and stuff. The, 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 as an uh, attendee, you'll get links to the presentations and everything. So what I suggest is pick out the ones where you want to ask questions, right? So go to the sessions that you feel that you want to actually interact uh, there because you may have some specific questions. Maybe the the speaker, you kind of know the speaker, you've seen them really successful, know what they're doing, and you want to ask them, again, something specific. So those are the ones you should really write down and you should do and yeah, half twos, and then make note of the ones that are kind of interesting that maybe you don't need to be there in person because you'll get the presentations later after the show uh, that uh, you can kind of get all that information uh, after the fact. So that's another a good tip, I think. Yeah, no, that's excellent. And ask questions in these, engage. The people that are doing these sessions are all volunteers. They're not getting paid. They're not getting tasked. They are volunteering to share their experience and knowledge with you. And it is an excellent time to ask them questions and get resources that you just can't get on a day-to-day basis. Yeah. And I think the last thing that I would say is have fun. Now, seriously, have some fun while you're out there. Go see a show if you're into that. Go eat at that nice restaurant if you're into that. Go gamble. Whatever it is, you know, this is work and it's a lot of work. But, you know, as a WISP owner, right, and being in this WISP industry, you you work hard, man. You're working these ungodly hours. Sometimes a job is thankless. Uh, you really get kind of beat up <laughs> a lot. And uh, for, you know, for one time you have this opportunity. Take some time out for yourself, right? Go get a massage. I don't know, whatever it is, right? Go visit the spa. Go do something. Definitely make a point in those four to five days that you're out there to go out and do something that you want to do. Not not related to the show at all. Just take a you day for sure or a you hour, whatever it is, right? Shit, maybe it's just... You just want to sleep, right? You don't want to answer the phone. You don't want to have to make dinner for the kids, whatever it is. Maybe your day is just throwing on that robe and just chillaxing in, in, in the, the room. Whatever it is, make sure you put that on your schedule and you do that uh, for yourself as well. Really, really important to, to, to keep that in mind. Yeah, you know, a lot of folks that are deep in this industry, this is their only real vacation that they can get. So... You know, make use of it. If you bring your spouse, uh, definitely keep them in mind. You know, they they may not want to hang out with a particular crowd or they're like, I hear about this stuff all day at home. I don't want to hear about it at night while I'm in Vegas. So take them to a show. Go out and make sure they get pampered and have a good time too, for sure, for sure. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, that about rounds up all my hot tips I may have, uh, kind of our show of things. And I mean, mainly we just want to talk about it because we're pumped. We're ready. We're ready to get this. We're ready to see everybody. We're ready to go to the show and then we'll be ready to be done with it. (laughs) Yeah, definitely. So don't forget to come visit our booth. What is it? 647, I believe, right? In the, the back right corner. Uh, don't forget about our vendor presentation on Wednesday, October 13th at 9.15 a.m. in Champagne Room 4. Uh, and other than that, uh, catch us catch us around. If you can't make uh, either of those things happen, catch us at the bar, catch us in the hotel somewhere, uh, You know, ping us on social media, let's sync up. Uh, I, I love meeting all of our customers, uh, whether you know we've, we've known each other for years, we've been doing business already, or you've just seen me on social media or whatever, don't be shy. Come on out, uh, get together, look for me, Caleb, and the rest of our team. We'll all be out there uh, looking to interact with each and every one of you if we can. For sure, for sure. And if you can't make it to the show, you can find us where you can normally find us, uh, social media, various Swiss talk groups and stuff like that, RF Elements pages, Caleb at RFElements.com, toss us at RFElements.com. Reach out, let us know what you want to hear about. And until then, we will talk to you guys next time. Stay horny, everybody. All right, y'all, stay horny. <laughs>